What's going on YouTube? Today we are going to do another video on the SNES Classic Edition and we are going to find out how you can add more than just the 21 games that come preloaded on this bad boy. Upwards of 300 plus games can be added to this. Let's figure out how and let's get to it. It's on the Today we're going to be figuring out how we can add more games to the SNES Classic using a program called HackChi2. Now what HackChi2 allows you to do is it allows you to go in and add ROMs onto the SNES Classic Edition. There are some games that don't necessarily work the best, but those are few and far between. If this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos about video gaming and tech related things because that's primarily what I do here on this channel. Let's go ahead and move on over. All right, so over here on the computer, we are going to go to the website in the link down below and that will bring you right to the GitHub page that has HackG2 hosted on it. And we are gonna go scroll down here until you see the zip file. We're gonna click download. Once that has downloaded, we are going to open it up here and I use WinRAR to do my extracting. WinRAR can be located also at the link here in the video description. And essentially you'll go over to here and just click on the one germane to your system. Now going back to WinRAR, all we gotta do is take the folder here and I'm just gonna drag and drop it to my desktop and wait for that to extract. Once that has extracted to the desktop, all we're gonna do is we're gonna double click it and we are going to open it up here on screen and we are just going to click the application file, HackG. Double click it and now we are going to select the version that we have. So what system do we actually have? For the purpose of this video, we are using the SNES USA and Europe version. You can also use this program with the NES Classic. So we're gonna click that and we get a notice here, hello, I'm very glad that you're using HackG2. Just click add more games and select the ROMs plus synchronize and follow the instructions. Now that we have HackG2 open, my preferred method for importing games is to open up a folder that already has my games located in it. I will not be showing you where to locate ROMs for this video. That is something that I suggest that you Google and anything that you need to know about there can be found on the Google search engine. But the easiest way is to click in my folder here, hit control and A, and now I'm just going to simply drag them over and let go. And as we can see, it's going to be loading the games and processing them. Now that you have your games in here, you could just hit select games with the, or excuse me, synchronize selected games with the NES or SNES Mini. However, they will not have any sort of metadata for them, meaning you won't show any box art like it does on the SNES class. To fix this problem, we are going to click a game and we can quite easily just hit Google and we can select whatever box art we would like to see, even 3D box art. I personally choose to just do the flat section to match what is already on the system. As we can see, it filled in box art. Usually it'll grab most of the metadata from Google itself. So as we can see, there's a big difference between Aladdin and Batman Forever here where there is nothing. You see your metadata that this is a two player game and that this is a single player game, but there is no box art. So, but adding upwards of 300 games can be very, very tedious for that. We can select the games that we would like to find the box art for, do a right click, and then hit download box art for selected games. And this essentially is just going to download one of the first links on there. Um, in that description area or in that scene selection area that I mentioned or showed earlier. And it's just grabbing it all and putting it in here. So why don't we wait for that to finish and I'll show you what it looks like. Here we are all done. And why don't we go back in and look at this. So now as we can see, I'm going through all of these here and there is box art for every single one of them. I do select going in, or I do recommend going in and double checking this. So for example, SimCity 2000, that is not a Super Nintendo box art. So for the ones that are like this, all you gotta do is click on that, 
go to Google and essentially do them manually. Once you have your ROMs loaded in and your box art looking the way that you want it, we are going to do one final thing up in the settings tab. We are going to open up the option that says controller hacks and make sure that use button combination to reset is selected. Now I'm going to go down here to select button, the select reset button combination. By default it is the down on the d-pad and select. I prefer to change that to select and start. What that's going to do is when you hold select and start it will take you to the menu system on your SNES Classic. It is essentially the same as hitting the reset switch but much more convenient. You don't, if you're a little bit of ways away, you don't have to actually get up and hit that switch. We're going to click OK and we are going to go to the kernel option up here at the top and we are going to flash custom kernel. Do you want a flash custom kernel? Yes. Now we're going to follow the steps on here. We are going to make sure that our SNES Classic is off. We are going to have a USB cable hooked up to the back of the SNES Classic in our computer and we're going to hold the reset switch. Now we're going to flip on the power and if nothing happens be sure to hit the install driver button down here at the bottom. Just going to go ahead and give it a moment here. And once you see that go away, you can go ahead and let go of your reset switch. And we are going to wait for it to finish here. Essentially, it's gonna be doing two things. It is dumping your stock kernel in the event that you have an issue. It will have your stock kernel located in the HackG2 folder in the dump folder. And I highly, highly recommend making sure that you have a backup of that somewhere. Upload it to Google Drive, send it to yourself in an email. Um, or take other methods to make sure that you have that backed up. If you see this kernel dump but the MD5 checksum is unknown, you can go ahead and ignore that and click yes, and it will go on to uploading your custom kernel. This is what it actually allows us to upload our new games to the SNES Classic Edition. We're gonna go ahead and wait for that to be done, and then I will be right back to tell you our next step. All right, we are done here, and we can see done. You can now upload your games to the SNES Classic or the SNES Mini now. We're gonna click OK, and now it would just be as easy as clicking the synchronized selected games with the NES or SNES Mini. So all we are going to do is make sure the games that we want are selected and hit synchronize. And we are done. All we gotta do is click OK. And we are going to shut down our SNES Mini. And we are going to head over to the SNES Mini now and see what has changed. All right, and here we are on our SNES Classic Edition. As we can see, there's really nothing that has changed on the front page here. We still have our 21 games, except for this little folder here. Inside this folder is going to be the games that we have added using Hack Cheat 2. Let's take a look at some games and see how they play. Here is Nightmare Busters running on our SNES Classic. This is a game that came out in roughly 2013, so very, very new SNES game. And as we can see, the SNES Classic has no problem running it with the default emulator that's built into the SNES Classic. Now let's try something here. I'm going to or hold down the select button and hold down start. And just as we thought, it brings us back to the menu system. Here's one more game running on the SNES Classic, and that is going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. A lot of people were really sad that this did not make it onto the SNES Classic, but as we saw using Hackchi, it's no big deal. We can go ahead and put it on ourselves. Again, all we gotta do is press and hold select and press and hold start at the same time, and it brings us back to the main menu. At any point, if you wanna go back to your 21 original games, you gotta go back to this folder and hit back, and here they are, playable just like always. As you guys can see, the process is actually quite simple to load up more games onto your Super Nintendo Classic Edition. It's just a matter of loading up the program and putting the ROMs that you want actually in there. The other things that are really, really cool about HackG2 is I just barely scratched the surface in this video as to what you can actually accomplish with this program. Some of the other things that you can do include playing games from the systems other than the Super Nintendo on the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. So if you have one of these, you can actually play other systems 
on this using the RetroArch emulator. If you like this video where we add more games to our SNES Classic Edition, be sure to check out my comparison video between the SNES Classic and a Raspberry Pi 3 running RetroPie right up here in the cards. Thank you for watching folks and joining me in this quest to add more games to the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. And as we saw, it was very quite easy. It's just a matter of downloading the software or the program and putting your games into there. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Take it out of your mind, sing, sing.